All right, switch you on. Lights. There we go. Okay, never know how to start these things. Hello everybody and welcome to my office. Sometimes it does feel a little bit like I've switched one desk job for another, but today I'm here at my desk catching up off some admin and doing some post-processing on some of the images that I've taken recently. Now I've been doing YouTube for about two and a half years, a bit more than that now, and I like to share as much of my knowledge as I possibly can, but I've never ever shared how I process my images. So this is gonna be a bit of a first. So this is the image that I'm going to edit today. It's a shot of Easedale Tarn that I took a couple of weeks ago. And it's a nice shot. Uh, it's got nice reflections, it's got some nice foreground interest, but you'll notice that it's a bit dull and I like to shoot in overcast conditions. And in this case, there wasn't any direct light on the scene at all. And so most of my post-processing workflow is about trying to inject contrast into the scene. Now I like to break my post-processing workflow down into three phases. The first one is preparation. The second one is the main edit, and that's where the majority of the work is done. And then the third one is finishing touches. Now this image has already been prepared. And to do that, I break that down into three steps. The first step is lens corrections. So I like to tick remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And what that does, particularly with Canon lenses, is that actually brightens the image slightly. And so I always like to do that first. I don't want to go through all of my editing only to add that at the last minute and actually have my image get slightly brighter. Don't want that, so do that first. The next thing I do is I remove dust spots. Now generally you will find dust spots in the sky and in areas where there is limited detail. Um, so remove those. And then finally, I want to add a bit of contrast into the image. So I like to shoot on overcast days. And so the majority of my workflow is all about trying to inject contrast into the image to give it a little bit of extra punch, a bit of extra oomph. And so I do that by using a tone curve preset. And in this case, I've gone for strong contrast preset. So with the image prepared, I can now move on to the main edit. And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and walk you through it as I'm doing it in real time. So here we go. But the first thing that I do is I want to try and balance the exposure a little bit. So what I'm trying to get into the image here is nice detail in the shadows, nice detail in the highlights, and a nice even exposure. So in the basic tab, we're going to, on this case, we're just gonna brighten the image slightly, and then I'm gonna pull down the highlights, not too far, and lift the shadows, and then, I do want some, I want some blacks in there and I want some whites. So I'll just pull the blacks down a little bit. Yeah, push the whites up just a touch. And that's a fairly, that's a fairly good starting point. And then, as I said, I'm always trying to look and to get contrast into the image. And so the next thing that I do is I add a little bit of clarity. And what clarity does is it adds contrast to your mid-tones. And this is really good for bringing out uh, areas where there are lots of fine detail. Um, it's almost a little bit like sharpening. Um, you want to be careful of using clarity. It is the quickest way of spoiling your image. And I wouldn't advise you to use clarity on images where there isn't a lot of detail, where it's kind of smooth tones. Um, so yeah, so pop a bit of clarity in, um, and that just brings out some of that detail in the mid-tones. So with that done, I then go and I tweak some of the colors. Now, generally, I like my images to be slightly on the warm side. So if I go into the uh, color tab, um, and what I do is I like to move my greens, and there aren't a lot of greens in this image, admittedly. Uh, I move them a little bit towards the yellow, and then I, use, I move my yellows a little bit towards the orange. And that's all I do, just tweaking those colors. So once I've done that, I do a bit of split toning. Now this is probably the thing that has the biggest impact on my images. It's very subtle, but what it does is it adds a, a, almost like a, a slight uh, cross-processing effect to my images. And what I do is I like to warm the highlights, and there's a lovely little uh, uh, warm preset here which I use. Um, I add that, that warms my highlights, and then I like to cool down my shadows. And again, I use this um, slight blue preset here. 
And I also, as I say, I'm, I want to get a slightly warmer feeling to my images. And so using the balance, I just move that a fraction towards the highlights. So we're, we're cracking on, we're cooking with gas. So we're already at the detail. So here, I want to add a little bit of sharpening. So what I, what I generally do is I put the amount about halfway. I have a radius of about 1.5. I move detail to about halfway, and then I use masking to apply this selectively. Now, I think one of the biggest issues that I see in other people's images is images that have been over sharpened. I think it looks terrible. And so generally with masking, I really push it right to the far end. And I generally work somewhere in the region of about 70 to 90 on masking. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to bring detail into the areas where there is uh, a lot of fine detail. There we go. That's kind of the bulk of the main edit done. Um, and now I'm going to use probably the most underutilized tool in Lightroom, and that's the radial filter. And I'm gonna use this to make some selective adjustments. Now, in this particular image, I feel that the foreground is far too bright. And so I'm just going to use a radial filter across the foreground to try and darken it down a little bit. And so I'll pop that selection on there. And what I'm going to do, what I want to do is I want to darken this down. Now, what the way that I do it is by darkening both uh, the exposure, the highlights, and the whites. So I just pull the exposure down a touch, just a fraction. Uh, and then I pull the highlights down and then the whites. Now, if you just use exposure to do this, what you end up with is something that looks quite gray. So it's important to do the three, just, just a touch of exposure. Uh, so that's done. And now we can just move into the finishing touches, really. Uh, so the first thing that I do for finishing touches is I crop my image. Now, for the majority of my images that I display on social media, so that's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and my website, I use a 16 by nine crop. So I will pop a quick crop on here. And what I'm, what I'm trying to do is to get it nice and balanced. I mean, actually we've got the horizon very close to the upper third. Uh, I'm trying to include a little bit of, uh, of, of the, of the um, stones in the foreground, the, the beachy bit, uh, and not too much sky in this image. So that looks about right to me, I'll crop of that. And then the last thing that I like to do is I like to add a vignette to the image. And now what this does is this darkens down the edges and it draws the attention more towards the center of the frame. Now I have been guilty of overdoing the vignettes in the past. And so what I'm gonna try and do on this occasion is be a little bit more subtle. So in effects, post crop vignette, I just Pull that down, and I'm just I do it, I do all of my adjustments by eye, um, and then with that uh, vignette on, I then like to pull the midpoint right down so that that comes very close to the middle of the frame, and then add quite a large feather so that the transition of the vignette is as subtle as it possibly can be. There we go like that. Now at this point we're pretty much done but there are a couple of other things that I want to do with this image and this generally these little touches at the end they vary from image to image and so the first thing that I want to do on here is that the colors are a little bit muted as I said this was an overcast day and although the contrast has brought out some of the detail and, and given those colors a little bit of a lift they do need a little bit more in my opinion and so what I'm gonna do, and I don't do this for all images, it's just specifically this one. I'm just gonna push the vibrance up just a touch, just to bring those colors in, make the, give them a little bit of extra je ne sais quoi. Uh, there we go, something like that. Not, not too much, just to give them a little bit of a lift. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a few more little um, selective adjustments, particularly down here on this rock in the right hand corner. I think that's perhaps a little bit too bright. So again, with a radial filter, we'll just pop one over the top of this rock here, like 
that and again same as before pull down the exposure a touch and then the highlights and the whites and that's a little bit better I think on this occasion I might just add a little bit more clarity just to add some some contrast there and that's done and I'm also just for this image uh, I wouldn't normally do this I might just push a little bit more contrast in using the contrast slider and that helps bring those colors out and what that's done is also that's darken the image slightly and so we'll just pull the exposure up a touch not too much and there we go that's the finished image So that's pretty much it. That is my standard Lightroom workflow. That is how I process the vast majority of my landscape photographs. And the great thing about post-processing is that there's no right or wrong way to do it. This is just the way that I do my images at the moment. And this has evolved over time. You might do your images completely differently. And if you do and have some hints and tips for everybody else, then why not leave a comment below?